this is a really cool jig. Um, this is a regular angle grinder. And a hundred years ago in a machine shop, a machinist showed me how he would clamp. He made a little metal clamp that would do this. Uh, turn the angle grinder kind of into a bench grinder. So a couple years back, I made my own. I had some scrap metal. And I welded together this to hold this angle grinder. You can put it in uh, a bench vise like this. Or even a clamp like so. You could just get that puppy clamp down in there, and it, and it gives you the ability with this little tool rest to do that. So I thought I would make one, but instead, because I know not everybody has welders and works with metal, but a lot of us do woodwork, I have a big pile of scrap plywood um, and a couple of these. I don't know what these clamps were for, but I stole the star keys off of them. So we're going to turn these and this into this with some glue and screws and uh, make a jig for an angle grinder that anybody can use give you give you the advantage of having a little bench grinder. So let's check it out. So I'm going to start things off with cutting a bunch of different sizes of these uh, skinny pieces. I'm going to build up to create what holds the angle grinder and also the uh, tool rest, so to speak. The part you'll be able to rest a piece of metal that you want to grind off on. So these are all going to be different sizes and it'll make more sense once we get into the build. Now here I'm going to try and build a, uh, a brace. So once this thing is able to be screwed down to the jig, I want the back of the angle grinder to not be able to go back and forth. So it'll almost look like a, um, a Y or a horseshoe, I guess. But this is the part that will give the stability to the back of the angle grinder. And again, everything's going to make sense once I start putting it together. And I find that uh, tape roll really helps so we're going to cut this out with a jigsaw and then just to pretty it up a little bit we'll go ahead and sand it out once we get done I'm using a really skinny jigsaw blade here um, it might even be a metal blade but I find it works really well for cutting tight turns without distorting too much. Uh, I've never had a problem with it even though it's for metal. So real quick on the spindle sander just to smooth that out a little bit make it look a little bit better and um, we'll get to the next step. So it looks like we're going to start assembling now. Um, I like to use grew, uh, grew, glue and screws to start off stacking these blocks. And when this dries, when the glue dries, it's, it's going to be solid as a rock. I'm kind of making this up as I go along, but I, I have it pictured in my head what all of this is going to look like. So the next one is actually going to be set, inset, I guess you would call it, because I'm going to have a cross piece coming out of there. But again, uh, countersink some screw holes, a little bit of glue, and I'm pretty sure that's going to make it about as solid as you can get. And this, by the way, is um, the what I would call the rest, the metal rest, or whatever that you would be able to rest the piece on while the angle grinder is going. And uh, you'll notice that longer piece there, that's part of where the angle grinder is going to attach. It's starting to make a picture now. It looks like a little fence in the front. And I'm just figuring out where to put the screw hole. And we'll also have to cut a hole in this piece here. Because that's what's going to screw into the angle grinder to um, secure it down. And I'll be using one of those star keys. And remember, if you're going to do it like I did mine, put that star key in first before you go to glue it and um, put it down. Because once you get it glued in, it, you can't fit the star key up underneath it. It's a 1020 um, star nut thing, like I said, I had found as a scrap. 
And then on the end there, you see I've got a uh, support, and I'll end up gluing that in as well. So over at the bandsaw, what we're going to try and do is just cut out the area where the angle grinder is not, but all the sparks are. So it kind of helps give the sparks some place to go. Um, I don't know if it's going to work perfectly, but it's space that I don't need, so I just cut it out because the jig is pretty much what you're starting to see now. So now it's time to just uh, glue and screw that backrest, or the, uh, I guess you would call it a bracket, on the end of this and that should be stable enough to put this puppy together I thought about um, making an over the the top of the angle grinder has a quarter 20 hole as well to secure it but when I got this part on there when I set this in there and um, started tightening up that star key it was secure and I can't imagine that um, it will ever come loose and or vibrate at all. It is very, very secure in there. So I decided against putting a top piece uh, screw down on it. It just doesn't need it. And it kept it really super simple. And that's basically it right there. So now uh, there's a couple different ways you can clamp it down. Uh, screwing it to the top. If you have a junk desk or bench like I do, I screw into it all the time. So one way you could mount this now is to just simply screw it to the top of the bench. A couple of drywall screws and you're secured. Now you could also use a big clamp like this to the end of it, to the end of the bench. And that's how my, the one I had that was made of metal, the, the bracket, the uh, jig, it was made of metal. That's how I did it all the time. And you can also... Um, screw in a little uh, couple of blocks underneath it and use your bench vise to mount it as well but right here I'm just putting a little bit of a real quick edge on that machete that was uh, about as dull as a butter knife and you can see that it worked pretty well and that's it thanks for watching and um, we'll see you next time